The world of technology is often called a race, but lately it feels more like a tug of war. On one side, you have restrictions, sanctions, and political pressure. On the other, you have resilience, innovation, and sheer determination. And right now, at the center of this battle is Huawei. This November in Shenzhen, Huawei is preparing to unveil something much more than a phone. The Mate 80 series is being called a product launch, but in reality, it's a statement. It's Huawei's way of saying, we're still here, we're still innovating, and we're still shaping the future. And if you enjoy deep dives into stories like this, where technology meets geopolitics, do me a quick favor. Hit that like button and share this video with someone who'd appreciate it. It really helps the channel grow and lets more people join these conversations. So, why is this launch such a big deal? First, the timing. Huawei has been carefully rebuilding confidence in its supply chain. Think back a couple of years, every time they launched a flagship, it sold out almost instantly. Not because demand was too high, but because supply couldn't keep up. That's no longer the case. Models like the Mate 70 Pro, the Nova 14, even the ambitious triple-fold Mate XTS have all been available in steady numbers. That's not a coincidence, it's the result of Huawei deliberately scaling up chip production and assembly lines. Now, with the Mate 80 series rolling out just in time for the holiday season, they're ready to compete head-on with rivals like Apple and Samsung without the fear of empty shelves. But it's what's inside the Mate 80 that makes it truly pivotal. Huawei is introducing two powerful weapons, the Kirin 9030 chip and Harmony OS 6.0. Together, they form the backbone of the company's strategy, not just for this phone, but for the next phase of its survival and growth. Let's talk about the Kirin 9030 first. For years, chips have been measured by numbers, nanometer sizes, benchmark scores, raw horsepower. But Huawei has shifted the conversation. Instead of just asking, how fast is it? They're asking, how reliable is it everywhere you go? The 9030 is engineered to maintain strong, stable connectivity, even in difficult environments. Subways, basements, crowded city blocks, or while you're moving across networks. Think about how many times you've had a call drop at the worst possible moment, or your navigation app freezes when you're already lost in an unfamiliar city. Huawei's goal is to make those frustrations a thing of the past. The 9030 isn't just about speed, it's about certainty. And then there's the satellite connectivity. The Mate 80 Pro can link to low Earth orbit satellites, which means you're never completely cut off. Imagine hiking in the mountains, driving through remote areas, or working in disaster zones where the network goes down. This phone can still keep you connected. That's not just convenience, for some it's peace of mind, or even a lifeline. Now, while the Kirin chip represents strength and stability, Harmony OS 6.0 represents independence. And this is where the story gets really interesting. For years, Huawei has had to rely on Android, even after sanctions cut off access to Google services. But now, Harmony OS is becoming a true standalone ecosystem. Apps are running natively without compatibility layers slowing things down. This means smoother animations, longer battery life, fewer crashes, and overall a user experience that feels polished and natural. But it's not just about users. Developers are finding Harmony OS easier to work with. Tools are better, cross-device integration is smoother, and maintaining apps costs less. That matters because the more developers support Harmony, the faster the ecosystem grows. It creates a positive feedback loop. Better apps attract more users and more users attract more developers. This is where Huawei is playing the long game. Because let's face it, whoever controls the ecosystem controls the market. And Harmony OS 6.0 isn't just a phone system. It's spreading into tablets, wearables, cars, and even PCs. Huawei is quietly building a world where its devices talk to each other seamlessly, in ways Android sometimes struggles with. So let me ask you this. Do you think Harmony OS has a real shot at challenging Android, at least in China and maybe beyond? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'm genuinely curious how people see this ecosystem battle playing out, and your perspectives always spark really thoughtful discussions here. All right, let's shift gears back to the phone itself. 
The Mate 80 Pro is designed not just to perform, but to look and feel like a premium device. A 6.7-inch dual-layer OLED display with almost invisible bezels gives you more screen and fewer distractions. The titanium frame adds durability without making the phone heavy, and the ceramic back isn't just sleek, it's scratch-resistant and built to last. The design language here isn't flashy, it's professional, balanced, and aimed at users who want their phone to feel like a tool, not a toy. And then, of course, there's the camera system. Huawei has built a reputation for pushing mobile photography forward, and the Mate 80 Pro Plus continues that legacy. A 50-megapixel variable aperture sensor captures sharper details and richer colors, especially in low light. Night photos are clearer, portraits look more natural, and zoom shots finally feel usable even in dim conditions. For content creators, this means less editing. For everyday users, it means your photos just come out looking good no matter the situation. Security and privacy have also been upgraded. The ultrasonic fingerprint sensor works even if your hands are wet and the 3D face recognition adds an extra layer of convenience. Combine that with Harmony OS's improved privacy dashboard, where you can easily see what apps are doing with your data. And you have a device that's not only powerful, but also trustworthy. Now, here's something important to notice. Huawei isn't relying on one single breakthrough. They're not saying this one chip will save us, or this one camera will beat the competition. Instead, they're building resilience everywhere. Chip design, supply chains, software, ecosystems. It's like reinforcing every link in the chain so that no single weak point can bring them down. And that's what makes the Mod 80 launch so symbolic. It's not just about selling a few million phones. It's about proving to the world that Huawei can not only survive sanctions, but adapt and even thrive because of them. Every successful launch like this shifts the balance of global tech power, even if just a little. The series itself is structured smartly. The standard Mate 80 runs the Kirin 9S 20S, solid, reliable, affordable, designed for volume. It brings more people into the Harmony OS ecosystem, building the base. Then the Pro and Pro Plus versions powered by the Kirin 9030 showcase prestige and cutting-edge features. This two-tier strategy means Huawei isn't putting all its eggs in one basket. It's spreading its bets while building its brand. Whether you love Huawei or not, it's hard to deny that this launch is more than just a product release. It's a roadmap for the future. It says, we won't let restrictions define us, we'll define ourselves. And that's why, as November approaches, the eyes of not just tech fans but also industry watchers and policymakers will be on Shenzhen. Because the Mat 80 isn't just a smartphone, it's a symbol of how the global tech order is shifting slowly but surely. And with that, I'll wrap it up. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want to keep following stories where technology, business, and geopolitics intersect, make sure to hit like, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss the next deep dive. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.